everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Jessica Henry Gray and I'm excited to have you back this week. This week I'm going to demonstrate painting this beautiful black German Shepherd. This dog, his name is Bear and he is on the Minneapolis Police Department as a canine dog. He actually belongs to my brother-in-law. So I'm honored to paint him today and I hope that you join along. And also check out my link at the end of this video. I have a pet portrait workshop coming up online. Uh, this the end of this week so check it out I think you're gonna enjoy it and if you want to join along in that workshop uh, there are spaces still available we're gonna paint a dog and a horse all right so let's jump in All right, well, that's a little introduction to Bear, and this is today's painting. So I'm gonna start out with an 11 by 14 canvas. This is a linen canvas, and I'm taking a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre, and um, a little bit of ultramarine blue just to tone it down. Now I'm covering the canvas with it, and then I'm rubbing it off. I'm using a very little bit of odorless mineral spirits to help thin it out. And you'll see as I go along in my videos here, I'm going to use less and less of the odorless mineral spirits and I'm going to shift gears and do um, a little bit more of the linseed oil. So you'll see that little change in my videos. Um, all right, so I have thinned a mixture of just dark. You can use um, whatever is dark on your canvas or your palette. The, this is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Now I'm holding my brush very loosely and it's a smaller brush to sort of draw out the design. Um, but I am just kind of looking at the negative space behind his ears and forehead and I'm looking at the way that that angle opens up. And I, my first rule of composition is to figure out where on my um, canvas the object is going to fit within the boundaries of the rectangle. That's most important. You don't want the, in this case, the ears to go off or the nose to go off the bottom. So I'm determining the height on my canvas. So once I figure I, I don't want the dog taller than that, everything else has to fit into that window that I'm allowing myself. So I'm taking the length of the ear. You just make some marks, this is an ear. And then from there, you begin to measure distances of that ear throughout the dog's head. And if it fits, then the ear is fine and can stay that size. So I'm taking a pair of calipers. One end of the caliper is a point and the other one is a pencil. And um, sometimes that's okay. Most of the time it doesn't really matter because I'm using my brush to make the marks. But the ear that I have um, originally drawn is appropriate, it's appropriate for the size that I need. So I measured how far down the nose and how far across the other ear is. Looking at that negative space created between the two ears, that um, upside down triangle. And uh, of course the camera is slightly askew so you're seeing um, sort of a distorted picture of the dog on my canvas because the camera's over my shoulder. So it, um, I have noticed in this video, it makes his nose look a little longer and his ears look too close or whatever, but um, that's why I share the picture of the finished product throughout the video. So his ear is about two lengths, uh, his nose is about two lengths of one ear. And so that's a way that you can work out your drawing on your canvas. Just find something, determine something as what I call is my truth. And that piece of truth is what I'm going to be using to measure everything else by it. Um, so now I'm making other indications of where I see the shadows and the highlights as I'm going along. So I just took the measurement of his ear and 
um, on my picture, use the ear to find out how wide his muzzle is at the lower portion. So one ear is about how wide the um, that middle section of his muzzle. Placing the eye, trying to get that in the right place as well. Um, and just uh, going through and working out the various drawing places and elements of the picture. Looking, I'm drawing mental plumb lines, um, like from down from the ear, where does it hit the eye and where does it hit the bottom of his, um, like his neck there where the mouth tucks in. And there's sort of an invisible line that connects all those. And so I look for places like that throughout the drawing. Where Where is there a connecting line? And studying the contours of the form as well. It's very important. Um, Bear has such a distinct profile. And I just love all these sharp angles. So I really wanted to make sure I captured those. Now just like in doing regular human portraits, animal portraits are the have very similar um, things you have to pay attention to. Eyes, nose, and mouth are always on a perfect parallel, whether it's human or animal. You always have to check, no matter how the head is tipped, that the eye line is the same as the nose line. And if you can see the mouth, it's the same as the little mouth line. So just double check those contours. Now all these various highlights on, the, on his head indicate his bone structure. And just like on a, a person's portrait, people's portrait, the uh, various contours and topography are indicated by v different values, lights and shadows. And so I'm mapping those out and they're every bit as important as the contour because they're going to define form and give likeness. And also um, the reason that I am sharing this particular painting with you is because it's really, it's just a study in values and bone structure. Um, Bear has just such a beautiful bone structure that this is a great um, opportunity to demonstrate animal bone structure with you without having to worry about different colors and different breeds and so forth. Um, it's just a matter of where is it dark and where is it light. And then as I work on the contouring of the external features of his face, you'll see as I work on the background, uh, pulling those out. And I'll talk a little bit more about edge quality then too. So as I'm using a little bit broader brush now, I'm still just mapping out everywhere I see the darkest darks. And um, this is just a flat angled um, brush, uh, a synthetic bristle. And I like it because I can just lay down clean, crisp, sharp little um, angled pieces of value. And it's, it's not a stiff bristle brush like I would use for plein air or, or whatever that where I need to pick up large chunks of paint. This is just more of a study. So a smaller um, synthetic brush works very well for that. So I'm working through and I've put the darks where I need them and I'm mentally figuring out okay, where the, uh, the next value is going to be, the next lighter light as it were. And I'm taking just some of that dark and smearing it a little bit picking up some darker, um, working in the collar now. And again, this is just ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of white into the blue and brown and just a, just a notch up, I'm working on the middle tone value range, um, adding a little bit of white, sometimes a little bit of yellow ochre to warm it up a little. Um, right there where the temple of his head um, turns, we have a stronger highlight and it's very um, form defining. So it's important that I get it the right shape and size. So I'll come back and, and fiddle around with that a little as I go along. Now the areas where I had sort of smudged my darker value I'm coming now with that medium tone and just again working out the contours of his nose and um, where I'm seeing these lighter values picking up some of the light there really aren't any strong highlights on this dog 
um, so because it's a he's a black dog, nothing white, um, which makes it kind of interesting too. Painting all black dogs or all all white dogs have its own challenges because your values are all very close together. If I were to just put white on the on him as a highlight, it would um, stand out too much or look like a white patch. So I have to be careful to not err too far on the value scale. So I'm keeping in the lower range. And then I'll, I'll, I decided already that I'm going to make the background uh, lighter in pitch so that it is, it has that really nice contrast because the dog himself doesn't, he doesn't have a lot of contrast on his form. So I'm just gently suggesting where the ears are inside the, they're almost like little calla lilies that turn around. So I'm just being cognizant of the way that the form is. Uh, the side of his face has some fur that comes out, kind of wolf-like. And so I'm pulling out some of those, um, the fuller fur on the side of his cheeks. Now, another thing I like about this brush is that I can kind of flick it and get really uh, some nice, soft, angular fur-like texture into the fur and the, uh, the fluffy um, collar. And I really like that aspect of it, of the, using this brush. Now to work out the expression in his eyes, I'm taking a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow ochre and I'm just working on getting the color and I'm working on it in layers, but for now I'm going to map out just whatever I see is the color inside his eye. I'm not worried about the darks or the sparkle yet, but I want to get the um, elliptical oval of his eye in the right angle in the socket. Um, so that is my first objective. I'm also piecing out the darks as they are shaping in the eyeball. His eyes are so expressive and I just love the way he's looking up and, um, expectantly. And so I wanted to make sure that that was really the heart and soul of this painting. And anybody who has pets knows that the expression in their pet's eyes is the most important thing. And, um, so working on getting that color just right. And obviously I don't have it quite yet, but... I come back and I pick through this a little bit more. I have, right now, I have the dog looking straight ahead and I wanted him to look more upwards. And I noticed that in um, the painting, I had to adjust the angles of his, the darks around the eye a little bit more. Okay, now a little bit of white and some yellow ochre. I'm gonna start working on the background. And again, I'm using a, this as a different brush, a sharper edged flat, and I'm coming up in and around. I like this brush for this purpose because I can really chisel out the shape and contour of um, his form. And I knew that there were a few places that needed a little bit of work and effort to refine the shape. So in one hand, I have the dark, color that is going to help um, refine and bring out and in the other hand I have the white uh, of the background so I'm switching back and forth between brushes to really refine his overall shape. Now as I'm working on this background I wanted to take a minute to talk to you about uh, my upcoming workshop I have um, later this week actually uh, February 2021 I am doing a pet portrait workshop. I'm going to be teaching painting a dog and painting a horse. Um, I think that between those two, a lot can be covered in capturing anatomy, uh, fur color, expression, and so forth. So I'm excited to teach that. Uh, there are places still available. And um, I, it's a Zoom. It's online. And it's $325 for four sessions. Two will be of the dog and two will be of a horse and they are four hour sessions. The first half of the class is a demo and then the second half is 
student work and I, we turn the cameras around and I get to help out the students and as they're working along on their paintings. So it's a great time and I just love my Zoom workshops. Um, we get people from all over the world, which is really convenient and a wonderful um, new uh, thing to be adding to what we do. Um, and so I do actually have a lot more workshops planned this year and I'm excited to share those with you. All the links are down below if you wanna check those out. Um, a lot on drawing, portraits, um, in-person workshops, important things that we all need to have a little bit more of in our lives. And of course, if you can join an in-person workshop, the camaraderie is fantastic. And I've got some places where I'll be this year that are really wonderful. And I know that a lot of people have expressed an interest in joining France. And we do have some spots available. We've um, moved the date just to accommodate for the COVID situation. And so there are about three or four more spots available in this year, 2021. So if you were wanting to join along in France, um, it's now moved to August 30th. So check out those links. And um, again, if you're interested in the pet portrait workshop, that is coming right up. Um, so I'd be happy to have you in there. So check out those links. All right, back to this painting. Uh, and now I'm just working on this background a little bit more, keeping it cool, keeping it quiet. I don't want it to be distracting. All right, and because Bear is with the police department, I had to give him a thin blue line, just suggested back there. Uh, I just really love that aspect of this uh, portrait because it just means so much to Bear, his work, his job every day. It's like you can see these working dogs, that is all they live for is getting out and doing stuff. It's amazing, amazing dog. Okay, so when I'm satisfied with the contouring of the background and um, how the dog's form is, I'm just taking my darker brush now that I was using for the dark paint and I'm flicking in a few places right up into the background and I'm wiping my brush off in between every little flick because if you don't, you pick up the wet paint from the background. And that's one of the secrets to alla prima painting, which means painting in one sitting. Um, and that's what this painting is by keeping what you, that's part of the problem is you don't see off camera is how often I'm wiping my brush off. People often write to me and say, how do I keep my colors from getting so muddy? The trick <laughs> is to clean your brush often and to not over mix. If you start over mixing and you, um, you get too many colors on your palette, things can get muddy pretty quickly. Uh, one of the things that I do, of course, is to wipe my brush off often, and I paint with a limited palette. And so anyway, going back up and through here, again, I'm just working out the fur texture. And I love this angled brush for that, just flicking here and there. And I'm also refining some of the shapes of the highlighted fur. As I saw them, some of the shapes were um, just needing some adjustment as I was going along. Now I'm working on this value of the, um, just the light as it comes down the bone of his nose and um, I'm just refining the lights again. One of the problems that people often have with values is that they look too long at one area. 
what can happen is, is you can start to see the values getting too dark and you start painting them that way. Or you start seeing them too light or you, you just get too um, focused and, and zeroed in on one thing that you forget to see it all as a universal whole. So I'm always encouraging people, no matter what it is you're painting, whether it's the faraway trees or, um, the, in this case, the values on a dog's fur or animal's fur, uh, just be looking around the whole image all the time because you need to take it all in as a universal whole to see the balance and to see how the relationships work together. Uh, it's amazing how our eyes can uh, play tricks on us that way just to adjust the values. You'll see that too as you're looking at distant trees and how dark they seem if you really focus on them. But until you focus on something that's truly black, like right in front of you, do you see actually then how very light those distant trees are? Same thing with this dog. Make sure that as you, if you're doing a black furred animal, um, just always be moving around to take it in um, all, as a universal whole. So using a tiny brush now, I'm just working on getting the actual expression. This is the finished uh, picture of his eyes. You can see just kind of tweaking little things here and there to get the illusion of his eyes looking up. Um, and so using a tiny brush, and I have a mall stick, you can see. I'm not resting my hand directly on the painting, but it's on a cane. And the top part of the cane is looped over the edge of my easel. And so I'm coming back through here now and just refining the highlight and the actual ochre tones of his eyes. And um, the, they're not really eyebrows, but the way that the skin picks up highlights above and below his eyes, um, that's very indicative of where he's looking and just the overall shape too. All right, and I just felt a little indication of his collar was kind of an interesting feature. Um, so I just took some gray to map out where the rings are on his chain. And then just with a little bit of white, I was able to put the highlights on the chain. And you don't really need a lot of time and attention on collars and things on dogs because it's very distracting. So most of the time people want some sort of collar or necklace or whatever on their animal and that's okay to put that in but i would just definitely keep it secondary to the overall expression of the dog you don't want to be calling too much attention all right well that pretty much wraps up this video i hope you enjoyed um, the afternoon with bear and um, thank you so much for joining me be sure to check out the links below and if you want to know what i'm doing ahead of time Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I usually make an announcement of my upcoming videos. Thank you, everybody, and I hope to see you at one of my upcoming videos. All right, workshops. everybody, well, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for joining me, and be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And also, check out the link at, at the end of this video and down below about my pet portrait workshop coming right up. I think you're going to enjoy this one, and I will see you next time. All right, bye-bye.
A lot of people want to get better at learning to paint their furry little friends and so in this four-part class I'm going to be talking about painting pets. I'm going to cover important information about painting animals and how to capture their personality. We will go over painting dogs and horses and maybe some other animals as we seem appropriate. Learning to capture an accurate rendering of an animal is really something that I get asked to teach often. And so I'm excited to offer this workshop for you and I hope to see you there. Check out the link below. I absolutely love Victorian watercolor and it's one of my favorite uh, methods of painting just to relax and enjoy. It's very portable, easy to take along with wherever you're going. This will be a two-part class and we are going to go over how to paint in watercolor, how to control your washes, and all of those step-by-step -step processes you need to have in order to be able to create watercolor paintings. In the second session we're going to um, have our papers ready and execute a Victorian watercolor painting from start to finish using the methods of Victorian watercolor artists. We will look at some of the great Victorian watercolor artists that have come before, Beatrix Potter, Arthur Rackham, and so many others, and just look at what they did and how to utilize those effects to work for us in our own works. Painting in watercolor is like a breath of fresh air, and I find that when I sit down and I've got my drawing on my watercolor paper, I'm just, I'm at ease and relaxed and there's a challenge and I really want to encourage you to, if you haven't tried this yet, to explore this wonderful versatile medium. I think you're going to enjoy this workshop. Critical to any artistic venture is the need to have mastered the hand and eye control through the practice of drawing. Learn the basic tools to first establish drawing accuracy through measuring, and then you learn how to develop accuracy through just using your eye while you're painting. This course is designed in four sessions to teach you how to truly observe with your eyes. We're gonna talk about measuring, using plumb lines, and some basic tools that you can use then later into whatever endeavor it is that you're gonna be working on. Painting, portraiture, still life, plein air, it's critical that you learn how to draw before moving on to other elements in your art. This four-part lesson is online and is designed to teach you the fundamentals of learning how to paint portraits in oils. It is important to learn the basic steps to capturing a likeness and a personality in your painting. Art is so much more than just being a photorealist and a copyist. It's our job to see beyond that. In this class, I'm going to teach you the foundations of capturing a likeness, but I also want to underscore the importance of capturing who that person is, how to capture that personality. I'm going to talk about mixing skin tone and hair and all those other matters that we need in portraiture. Join me in Florida for four days of fantastic plein air painting in one of the most beautiful beaches in Florida. Aqua turquoise waters, white sugary sand beaches, perfect temperature. It is the prime location for plein air painting. Painting on these silky white sand beaches is just such a privilege and a treat. Um, just mastering the color in that water is just, it's a joy and I'm want to encourage you to sign up. We've got a few spots still left for the workshop this year in April. We talk about values and composition in your plein air painting. Of course, this is an in-person workshop. This was, this workshop was in 2019. And, um, but as far as 2021 goes, we will be practicing more social distancing. Everybody enjoyed it. It was a reading and just had a great time.
Just two hours north of Charleston is a town called Bishopville. And in Bishopville, I will be teaching a portrait workshop at the Opera House in May of 2021. This is going to be an in-person workshop, painting the portrait from life. It has its own unique challenges, uh, painting from a three-dimensional form, but I love teaching that. And it's important to learn how to see shapes and values and colors accurately. Photos uh, allow us a lot of distortion. So working from life is just a fantastic opportunity. In this workshop, I will discuss uh, working from life and using our eyes to observe and measure. We'll talk about painting skin tones and hair and using our brushwork to help define form, as well as values and topography to create the illusion of a sculpted form. Learning to paint the portrait is a fantastic means of an art discipline. Um, it's even better in a group setting uh, where everybody can have the opportunity to hear and receive advice and help from other people. And you get that extra feedback when you can hear group critiques. Um, this is a picture coming up here of the group that I taught in Ireland. Fantastic group of ladies in the portrait workshop there. I hope you can make it to South Carolina and take my portrait workshop there. Join me in Charleston, South Carolina, plein air painting workshop. Um, very excited to paint in this one of the most beautiful cities in the entire nation. Rich in history, Charleston is full of color, energy, and a rare vitality. Three days of plein air painting, capturing the city, land, and seascapes. I am so excited for this workshop. It is going to be a fantastic three days of painting in person. And this look at the color of this. It's absolutely beautiful city. We're going to enjoy painting the beautiful beaches as well as the colorful cities. My workshops are fun, and we're going to keep it engaged um, in a lot of energy. Uh, we keep very safe in the workshops as well. Uh, in this season of COVID, um, everybody's wearing masks as it's appropriate, but we are also outside and that helps with um, stopping the spread. So I hope that you get to enjoy this one and look over it and I hope to see you in South Carolina. Listed in the top 100 most beautiful beaches in the world by National Geographic, Cannon Beach is a joy to plein air paint. The Oregon beaches truly are one of my most favorite beaches in the world. The water is a stunning aqua, deep sapphire, velvety blue. It's just unlike anywhere else in the world, with massive rocks and starfish, crashing waves. Um, there's an endless supply of things to paint. And uh, we had a wonderful time painting there this last October. Um, we kept very safe, uh, COVID free. Uh, this is um, the group that joined us. We had a fantastic time. And this is a, a wonderful opportunity to just study how to plein air paint. It's soothing and relaxing listening to the ocean waves while painting. Just sort of takes all your cares and washes them right back out to the sea. It's just absolutely breathtaking, peaceful. Ancient forests, mysterious. Um, they're just, they have this intrigue that you don't find anywhere else in this country. Majestic beaches, soaring cliffs, makes Oregon a fascinating must on any plein air painter's list. Out and uh, everywhere you find, everywhere you look is somewhere fantastic to paint. So I hope that you um, take a look at this one, follow the link for more information. I would love to meet you in Oregon this coming year. Throughout the course of our artistic journeys, we often have hundreds if not thousands of photographs of beautiful landscapes. And in this workshop, I want to teach you how to take those photos and turn them into beautiful landscape paintings. This is an online class and it is a four-part session 
and we will go over painting from photos. I have four paintings that I will be doing a demo each day in the class. And in this painting, I will show you how to break down a composition from your photo. And if you have a plein air study, we can go over that, how to incorporate that into your um, painting in the studio, and then how to just work out the final result from your photo using the challenges that come with working from photos. Values, color, distortions, and so forth. So in this class, I will demonstrate painting water, uh, painting trees. I'll demonstrate painting certain lighting effects that we often try to get in our paintings. And I'll also paint some sort of building or housing structure. I hope you can join me in this very informative online workshop later this year. This year is full but we are taking reservations for our workshop next year 2022. We are confirming and finalizing a date. It will be in the summer of 2022 and this is exactly the format that it will be in for that year. This year we're going to be touring France. Southern France will be in um, these beautiful areas. We are, I am painting at Les Vieux Cavan and um, it is a 10-day workshop all included except for your flight and a couple of meals. All of the rest of your meals and your lodging and your tuition are all covered in this workshop. We will be in the most stunning place here in the world as far as I'm concerned. It is gorgeous and I cannot wait. Um, I hope that you can join me for 2022 to paint in these medieval villages um, and just gorgeous, gorgeous areas to paint. I am also adding, as a special bonus, a three-day uh, trip to Paris. For more information on that, check out my links below on my workshop this year. I wish you the very best in your artistic endeavors, and I do hope our paths cross at some time. Thank you all for your support, and have a... Thank you so much for listening, and have a wonderful week, and I will see you tomorrow when I put my new video up. Okay, bye-bye.